family and friends of the Seaview Tabernacle. Welcome to this another Bible study from your host, Pastor Horace Forbes, as he continues with the theme, God Loves the Church. Today we'll examine the continuation of the, the duty of the local church in prayer. Let's grab your Bibles now as we turn to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. Pastor, will you read that for us? Thank you. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Prayer is essential. We are encouraged to pray always. And so let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you for this evening and for your love for us and for the fact that we belong to you. Father, we love you and we ask that you continue to guide us in our daily administration. Thank you for protecting us. And Lord, we just pray now as we go into Bible study, oh God, that your word will resonate with the hearts of our people, that they will learn to pray. The Bible encourages us to pray without ceasing. Pray always. Help us not to be only Sunday morning prayers only, but to pray consistently. Bless us now, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we go into our Bible study, there are many truths that we can get from the Word of God. What I want for you, I will turn over to Pastor, but remember to like, share, and subscribe to our study. Yeah. Pastor Forbes, over to you. Thank you very much, Sister Forbes. As we continue with the topic, uh, the theme, God, through Jesus Christ, loves the church. And we have been dealing with Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25. And we know that the church belongs to him. And the first thing we look at in our study, we look at the definition of the church. And we say the church is a call out set of people saved by the grace of God. People who are cemented together by the blessed Holy Spirit. It tells us that we are sealed by the Spirit of God in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. And we also, not only we are called, not only we are cemented, but we are citizens of God's kingdom. The second thing that we look on is the description of the church. And we say the church is the body, our building, our bride, or it is the temple. And therefore, Christ lives within our hearts. The third thing that we look on is the development of the church. God gives the church, firstly, a message. And he speaks of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He also tells us of the method, preaching and witnessing. The disciples should go and preach to all nations. And the message, the method, and there was a movement in Acts we have from the 120 to 5,000 souls that were added to the church. Then we look at the destiny of the church. Christ will come for the church one day. Paul said, if it was in this life we have hope, we would have men most uh, uh, miserable. Then we also look at the deliverance of sinners. And a sinner is saved whenever that person receives the Lord Jesus Christ. Then 50, we look at the deity of the church. Because Christ is the head of the church. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23. He is in charge. But 16, we look at the divine work of the blessed Holy Spirit. As we said, the Father planned the church. Jesus Christ purchased the church. And the Spirit 
persuades or convicts or converts people into the body of Christ. But we also look at the defense of the, of the local church because the church is under constant attack from within and without. And we are under constant struggle. We are in a warfare. And therefore Paul reminds us that we should be strong in the Lord. Then we look at the deliverance from satanic attack. As I said, you must always be on your guard. And the last time we look at the duty of the local church. And as Paul said, put on the all armor of God. That will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. But today we will be looking particularly on what prayer is within the local church. Paul is saying, praying always without prayers. Praying within the blessed Holy Spirit. And allowing the word of God to motivate us and to tell us what on how to pray. So Paul, yes, put uh, the, uh, reminds us that the believers can be conqueror and therefore we can be victorious because we know the church is composed of individ individuals. People who are saved and they are added to the church day by day. And therefore we are should go on from victory to victory, conquering and to conquer. And the only thing that can happen is when we focus our attention upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we are filled by the Spirit. And there are two of Paul's prayers are recorded. And I want us to get that. In uh, Ephesians chapter 1, 15 to 21, was for believers to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of christ therefore believers should have wisdom and believers should be knowledgeable the second prayer is in chapter 3 14 to 21 and it was for the believers to have experienced that knowledge of the indwelling work that is within us the work of the spirit in our lives and therefore the special armor of believer is what we have been discussing that we should be praying always spend time in prayer because we do not know when the devil is going to attack us and as any to take on the old armor the end of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. But praying always. And therefore believers are to be constantly praying. Prayer is not a part of the armor. But believers who have on the arm. Put on the armor. Should spend time in prayer. Because it is a part of the Christian lifestyle. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. In order for believers to stand victoriously in conflict, there must be constant, earnest prayer. Praying always to God for spiritual deliverance. Remember when uh, Peter was kept in prison in Acts chapter 12. But the believers... They prayed earnestly, consistently, and constantly for Peter who was in prison. And Daniel experienced the battle in prayer. When he prayed to God for divine deliverance, for help, yes, the answer was sent to him. But the king of Persia prevented Daniel from getting the answer. And I wonder, Paul himself wanted to go to Thessalonica, but you know what happened? 
Satan hinder him, prevent him from going. So we are saying that the devil, with all his emissaries, since he is the prince of the power of the ear, he can prevent certain things to happen. So you and I must spend time in prayer. Our Lord knew of the battle of prayer because he agonized in prayer. Luke chapter 22 and verse 41. So prayer is a conflict in itself. And it is vital in the spiritual warfare if the believers are going to be involved in the struggle, in the war, and to become victorious. There must be perseverance. We are to fight the good fight of faith. That's why Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. So what is prayer? Prayer is communication. It is communing with God. No wonder the prophet said, nevertheless, we made our prayers to God. In spite of Tobiah and Sambalat, they were there. But he said, we what? Made our prayers to God. So it is important, my brethren, that we spend time with God in prayer. Prayer that is not in the, in the spirit is of no value at all. Because people use philosophical words, but not in the spirit. Their prayer sounds good, nice words, sweet words, and maybe we gravitate to the prayer. But the prayer is not in the spirit, as Paul is saying, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit, praying in the spirit so that God can hear and God can answer. But we also need to remind ourselves that if we regard iniquity in our hearts, the Lord will not hear us. So prayer is effective, yes, when it is directed by the Spirit to God. Not like the Pharisees who are so proud and feel themselves so big. But the publican said, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner. So God knows that we are in the war zone. And he knows the devil's plan. So as Christian saw in a conflict, firstly, he implanted in us the means of communication. The means of communication are talking to him. Yes, he motivates and he gives us the thought of how to pray. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not how we are to, supposed to pray, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with what? Groaning which cannot be uttered. So we do not know where, when Satan will attack us. Since of all, we do not know his plans, his method, his deception, his wiles. We don't know his pitfall, his trap. But the Spirit will forewarn us and tell us what plan the devil has for us. So therefore, we need to be near to the Spirit of God. Not only he plan, implanted in us the means of communication, but he implanted in us the method of communication. Because the Spirit prompts us to pray so we can be victorious. Believers must present, yes, their petition to the Father in Jesus' name. Praying in the Spirit must be Spirit-inspired, spirit in wrought, Spirit-taught, Spirit-directed, and Spirit-energized. Our prayer should concentrate 
on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not saying few words, but praying to the Lord. And uh, uh, thirdly, he implanted in us the measure of communication, the extent and the determination. It is taking a course of action. Prayer is an activity, talking to the Lord, praying constantly, always suggest alertness, awareness, be and the preparedness for the devil. It is not coming with words, with big words, that as I said, that have no meaning. Praying constantly, speak firstly to the measure of determination. Setting, settling on God, because he has supernatural wisdom by means of hearing us. Is sovereign. Secondly, dependency, because God is my support, and God is your support. God is my supplier, and is your supplier. God is my sustainer, and is also your sustainer. He's just trustworthy and reliable. We can always depend on Him. In ourselves, we can do nothing. For Jesus said, for without me, you can do nothing. And the wonder Paul said, I can do what? Oh. All things through Christ who strengthened me. Yes, and Ephesians 6.18 instructs that we are to pray with all prayer. Every kind of prayer. Public, private, long, short, audible, and inaudible. Mm -hmm. Asking and giving thanks to God. But not only determination and dependency, but there must be a devotion. It is to be loyal and is in deep affection to the Lord. Persevering in prayer, speak to the omnipotent, the great I am. Yes, God is powerful. God is able and show the scripture, those prophets, patriarchs, and leaders, they spend time to God in praying whenever the flank conflict arises. Yes, and Satan will use any device to keep us from praying. He uses fatigue on us, tiredness to discourage us. He uses doubt, discouragement, Depression to take away that desire to pray. It means that you could come in very tired. The devil said, go and sleep. I don't have that time to pray. Brethren, we are to resist Satan in these attempt and keep praying always with all prayer. Because we are living in a changing world. We are living in a wicked world. We are in a struggle. And Paul is saying, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit and watching there to with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. May this be the desire of our hearts as we serve him. Bless your words to all and glorify yourself in us today. And help us, O oh God, to be victorious. Mm -hmm. Help us to conquer and to conquer. Help us not to give in to the devil, knowing that ambush lies the evil one. But we can be victorious when we communicate to you. So bless your words so hearts now and glorify yourself in us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>